a happy spouse, a happy house. Red flag. Red flag. That is a spiritual attack. That is just simply planting a seed that will manifest into a horrible, horrible situation in the future. The enemy wants to plant seeds of distrust and uncertainty in your relationship. Hey, welcome back. My name is Aaliyah. I'm a faith-based creator here on YouTube. I release videos every week. So if you are looking for some encouragement while you're on your faith journey, make sure you click the subscribe button to join the family. Now, today we are talking about how to recognize spiritual attacks in your relationship. Have you ever felt like you were under an attack in your relationship? Like you couldn't quite put your finger on it, but just something seemed off? Well, that could be your instincts telling you that you are going through a spiritual attack in your relationship. But here's the thing. God has given us discernment to identify when we are going through a spiritual warfare. So how can we identify these things? How can we see these signs and signals? Well, that's what we're going to discuss right now. Number one, constant conflict. If you and your partner are experiencing several unresolved conflicts or maybe misunderstandings, you're just not getting on the same page, this could be a sign that you're experiencing a spiritual attack. Now here's the thing, the enemy wants to divide and conquer, but we cannot give him that satisfaction. That means that if we are experiencing conflict or arguments or misunderstandings in our relationships and in our marriages, then that means we have to start having conversations. Let's open up and start having those healthy conversations. Ask, hey, babe, what's going on? Hey, honey, what can I do to make this situation better? What can I do to make you feel better? Let's communicate. God desires unity and peace. He wants to see us come together. He wants to see us resolve our conflict in a healthy way. Let's start having those healthy conversations. It might be uncomfortable, but we cannot allow the enemy to win. Number two lack of affection if you and your partner are experiencing lack of affection or a lack of connection or communication this could be a sign that you are going through a spiritual attack the enemy wants to isolate us and put distance in between us but again we cannot let the enemy win we have to recognize that oh we're going through something right now in our relationship, but let's talk through it. The best ways to do this is spend that quality time with each other. Go on dates, literally grab a pen and pencil, grab a piece of paper and start to write down different date ideas and different things that you guys can do in the upcoming weekend and week. Start to plan that alone time, that quality time together. Pray together, go to church together and start to really build a connection on a deeper level. One thing I love to do for my husband, especially in the beginning of our marriage, when I was really still trying to figure this whole wife thing out, I was asked the question, hey, babe, what can I do to be a better wife or to be a better mother or be a better friend and spouse to you? What can I do to be better? I know not a lot of people want to hear their flaws, but I'm like raising my hand. Tell me my flaws so I can do better and I can be a better person and a better wife for you ask your spouse that ask your spouse what i can do what what is it that you can do better what type of dates do you want to go in what are, what's something that will make you smile and happy put that other person's needs before your own you have to start like get into a competition with your spouse to see who can do more for the other person like that's the different type of stuff me and my husband do like we don't get annoyed when we you know have different things to do for each other because we enjoy it we like to see each other happy we like to see joy in each other's eyes and just in a happy environment God calls to love on each other deeply. We need to love our spouse, love the person that we're married to, cater to that person in a healthy way. Allow for your spouse to cater to you in a healthy way. You guys are catering to each other to grow and build off of this foundation. Number three, negative influences. If you start to notice an increase of negativity or toxicity, then it could be a sign that you are under a spiritual attack. Pay attention to the people you're around. Pay attention to the things that you guys do individually and together as a couple. It's gonna be important that you surround yourself around people of like-mindedness. If you're single, let's say you're in just the dating stage, maybe you're just um, girlfriend and boyfriend, but you want to get married, that's what you're working towards. 
Start hanging around married couples. Hang around married couples that put God first in their marriage and that put God first in their family so you can see a healthy representation from it. I know a lot of us, I know especially with me and, and my husband, we didn't necessarily see a healthy marriage or a healthy family growing up. That wasn't something that we saw or were experienced or privy to. So we had to literally allow God to teach us how to do that, to teach us how to be in a healthy marriage and how to be a healthy wife and healthy husband for each other. This was something we had to learn. Now, if you if you put yourself around those type of people who will encourage your relationship and and fight for you guys when things aren't, you know, aren't super good, you need to surround yourself around those people. Like like let's 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 just be honest. Let's make it make sense. If you are looking to be married but you're hanging around single people who are doing single things, what do you think is going to happen with your relationship? Where do you think your marriage is going to go from there? It's going to be so important that you are around like-minded people. You want to feed your energy, feed your mind, feed your thoughts and a relationship with positive things that God feels is healthy for you. Number four, doubt and fear. Spiritual attacks often manifest as like doubt, fear, and insecurity. I know this is a big one for me. In the beginning of my faith journey, I had so much doubt and fear that it started to progress into insecurity. It's like a domino effect. <laughs> the moment that you start to add doubt and fear into your life, it starts to spiral and eventually goes into an insecurity, which eventually goes into conflict. The enemy wants to plant those seeds. He wants to plant those cracks and plant those seeds of uncertainty in our life and in our relationships, but we can't allow that. The moment that we allow the enemy to just slide on in that's when we start to see conflict that's when you get that unwanted dm or you get that out of nowhere text message or you have that conversation that you know you should not have been having when you allow the enemy to come in when you are experiencing that doubt fear uncertainty overthinking when you're experiencing those things you are going to lose every time. But the moment you allow God to be not only your foundation, but your protection in that forefront in your relationship, nothing or no one can slide in. God offers peace and assurance. He has a plan for your marriage. He has a plan for your relationship. Allow God to take control of it. Eliminate the doubt and fear and just bring it to him. Number five, distractions from God. If you and your partner are starting to drift away from God, this is a huge red flag that spiritual attacks are coming your way. God desires to be our foundation. He wants to be the foundation of our marriage. He wants to be the foundation of everything in our life. When God is your foundation, there is no way that you can come tumbling down. Now I want us to grab our Bibles and I want us to look at Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The enemy is always going to want to get in. The enemy is always going to want you to turn your back against God. And he's going to do that by getting you at your weakest points. So if you are recognizing any of these signs, I want you to remember that God is greater than any spiritual attack that may come your way. He offers protection, he offers guidance, and he offers strength. Pray together, come together as a union. Pray together with your spouse, pray over your problems, pray over your doubt, your fear, and your uncertainty. Pray over the things that are causing conflict in your marriage. Remember, your foundation with God will be the most important thing when it comes to a healthy marriage. Put God first. Put God first and foremost in every area of your life and just watch as your life flourishes. All right, it's your turn. I want you to leave a comment below and let me know, have you experienced a spiritual attack in your relationship? I'm going to leave my comment as well, so I want you to make sure you check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.